Before we get into the nitty gritty of interactive components, let's first understand what a component is and how to create them. To do that, we're going to use the humble button to explore the component features that Protopie gives us out of the box. So here we have a typical welcome screen with a couple of buttons. If we want to use these buttons over and over, we could duplicate them. The problem is if we want to make changes to any attribute, we would have to do this multiple times for every single button duplicate. Making this button a component will give us a button template of sorts from which we can make multiple copies called instances. These instances aren't just disconnected copies though. They are clones of the original with a persistent connection. If we make changes in the component, all of the instances will also get this change. We could actually say that the instances are children of the component and the component is the parent. To take this analogy further, we could also say that like children, our instances inherit attributes from their parent. In fact, not only can they inherit attributes, they can also override them and have unique differences. In Protopy, we can use this intrinsic relationship to our benefit. It will save us time and in some cases will be required to achieve certain interfaces and interactions. If you're working as a product designer, you will no doubt already be using a Figma library with differently designed buttons. In Protopy, it's exactly the same. Some button styling is not too much different that it can be changed while still being connected to its parent component. Okay, enough theory. Let's explore these concepts visually and actually create a button component and some instances. Okay, in this Pyo file, we have a sign up screen with two buttons. We want to be able to have a single component that these two buttons can inherit from. So let's choose one of the buttons to be the foundation for our button component. So I'm just going to choose the sign up button at the top here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is turn this into a component. And there's a couple of ways we can do this. We could use the component button up here in the toolbar, or we could even right click and choose create component from the flyout. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so a few things have changed. So if we come back to our layers panel here, we can see the button has now turned into this teal color. We've got this lightning bolt to the left, and we've even got this number one appended to the end of the label. And this is because the button here in our layers panel is now an instance of the component. We can actually find the component inside of our components panel which is just sitting under this icon here in the top right hand corner. So we're just going to open up the panel here. And here it is sitting under local components. So to edit the main component, we just need to double click on it in the components panel here. So let's do that. Now we are inside the component. You'll notice the background is white and the layers panel has changed. Unlike Figma, a prototype component has its own space its own interactions panel, timeline, and variable panel. Because the component is the parent, any changes you make here will be applied to every instance or child. Okay, let's make the secondary login button from the same button component. So I'm gonna go back to the scene. I'm just going to move my secondary button out over onto the left-hand side, just use it as a reference. And to see it, I just need to uncheck clip sublets. Okay, so there it is. Okay, so I'm going to drag out a component instance from my components panel. And I'm just going to place it roughly in the secondary button position. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is override the label text. Now, if I come into this, you can see I can't edit it. And that's because currently the text layer is an image and it's not editable. So we need to make it editable. So let's go back into the component. Find our text layer. Select it. And if we come over to the top right here, we can press the Make Editable button. You'll probably notice that the icon has changed slightly, so it's now got the editable icon. Okay, so let's come back to our scene. We can now override the text in this button, and we're just going to type this text the same as we had in the button on the left here.
Okay, so we've typed our text in, but you can see that the text doesn't fit because the text layer is too short. So we need to make another change inside of our component. So let's go back and open up our main component. We're going to select the text layer here, and we're just going to drag the size of it so it's the same size as the component. Okay, with that done, let's go back to the scene. We can see that our text layer now fits. Okay, so the second thing we need to do is change the background color to this lighter blue. So I'm going to select the instance here, come over to the properties panel, and I'm actually just going to choose the picker here to match that color. Now the button looks different, but they are still connected to the main component. Any property that is overridden at the instance level can't be changed at the component level. So to show this, let's go back into the main component and make a change. So I'm going to change the background color of the button to white. And I'm going to select the text label and change that color to black. Let's step out of the main component back to the scene. Okay, so we can see some things have happened. So the top button has honored those changes because we didn't override anything inside of the top button. It's now changed its background color and its foreground color matches. But you can see with the button underneath, the background color hasn't changed because we overrode it. The text has stayed the same, obviously, because we overrode the text, but the color of the label is actually changed to black because we never overrode the color of the label because it was already white. Now, sometimes you'll want to remove overrides on an instance. To do that, just find the instance you want to override or reset. So this, in this case for us, it's the bottom button. We're gonna right click and we're gonna choose reset overrides. As you can see, the button has now been reset back to its original state. It's now got a white background, black label, and actually the text override has, has also been removed. Cool, so as you can see, Protopie gives you quite a lot of control over the look of an instance and you can make many different types of buttons from the same instance. Why don't you have some fun and see how many different types of buttons you can create? Cool, so now you understand the basics of components, let's move on to the next lesson.